Hi everyone, this is Ken Edwards from the second semester engineering physics class, spring 2014, and I am here today to demonstrate to you how a RLC series resonance circuit is put together and uh, how it works. Okay, so we're here uh, in the lab and I'm going to show you the different pieces of this series RLC circuit. Uh, let's identify the equipment real quick that we're going to be using. Uh, on the top we have a 10 megahertz function generator. What that means is that we can create a sine wave, a square wave, or a um, saw wave that is between a single digits and up to 10 megahertz. Below that we have a 20 megahertz oscilloscope and what that means is that we can measure voltage across a circuit that is producing up to a 20 megahertz signal with a, you know, with decent resolution. Anything above that you're really not going to get anything. Over here I have the RLC circuit. There's a couple components here that may look familiar or not. Uh, the one on the left is a variable capacitor. Uh, this is actually two uh, variable capacitors in series with each other. And so if you were to add those, you, the, uh, the sum is 1 over C plus 1 over C. And in this case right here, I'm only going to utilize uh, the front capacitor because if you put the two together, it's uh, actually 205 picofarads, as I measured it with a uh, measuring device. And each one of them by themselves is 385 picofarads. So what it does is it allows me to make minor adjustments in my circuit. And uh, that variable capacitor is attached to a 0 0.001 microfarad, also uh, known as 1 nanofarad, um, high quality ceramic capacitor that's non-polarized, so you can put it in any direction in the circuit. In the middle, we have a variable inductor here, which uh, through some math, I had to actually use an equation to figure out the actual inductance of this uh, capacitor. So the maximum inductance is uh, 15.46 microfarads. Over here, um, we, we have to set up the, uh, the whole thing on a breadboard. And the breadboard is set up in a way so that um, there's wires underneath each row so that we can connect the components on the top and actually create this series circuit. Um, across the entire circuit is a function generator. This lead, this red lead, connects up to one side of the inductor. And then the current will go through the inductor and out and travel into the capacitor, which will travel out to that variable resistor that I set up there. And that will be the complete circuit there. Now, in order to measure across the, uh, actually measure the signal, you have to set up the oscilloscope across the resistor. And so it doesn't, it won't interfere with the oscillation that's occurring between the capacitor and the inductor. And so we measure, we have a common ground over here. The common ground is going to have the function generator and the oscilloscope connected to it. And then across on the other side of the variable capacitor, or sorry, the variable resistor, uh, we have the oscilloscope set up. So those are the components. And what that does together is that actually allows us um, having different variations, having a variable capacitor, a variable inductor, and a variable resistor allows us to actually uh, make modifications to the circuit on the spot instead of having a lot of uh, fixed components. Okay, so the next thing I want to demonstrate to you is how you know that you've hit a resonant frequency. Now the calculated frequency that this is supposed to hit is around 1.09 megahertz. And the reason for using um, a frequency a uh, resonant frequency at 1.09 megahertz is mostly because of the components and the ability to see a reaction when you get to a certain frequency. So this device over here uh, that I showed you earlier was actually meant to go into a tuning circuit uh, that has an antenna and it, range, it has a range of around 1 to 25 megahertz. And so it's really meant um, with these ranges when you're in a picofarad range and the microhenry range, uh, you're really meant to be over the one megahertz 
um, natural resonance frequency. Okay, so over here, what I did is I, again, I, I had this circuit still set up uh, with the same variables as that were set up before. Um, this is set up, so that's set up to 385 picofarads added with the 0 0.001 microfarads, which comes out to 0 0.001385 um, microfarads. And so uh, that gives us that 1.09 megahertz. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to, this thing's really sensitive, but you're, we'll go up here and you'll watch the, uh, the sine wave here starting to increase as it approaches the 1.09. And see, this is measured in kilohertz, and so this is actually 0 0.980 megahertz right now. So we're just going to keep increasing it slowly. It's still increasing on there. And when you hit the resonant frequency, it's at 1.09 megahertz right now, you're going to see that, it, oops, it's going to start backing off. And the reason why it backs off is because you're no longer, when you're not at the resonant frequency, you don't have a peak power um, output, and so your voltage starts decreasing um, again. So if we go by that really fast, you're, you're under it, and you go through it, it's going to go up and it's going to go back down. So if you're working on a resonant circuit and you, you think you're at the resonant frequency and it doesn't go up and go back down, then you probably have something uh, set up incorrect in your uh, circuit. Uh, you don't have a you know, circuit set up correctly. Or you might uh, actually have calculated your resonant frequency incorrectly. Now the other thing I'm going to show you here is that when we are at the resonant frequency, um, this, uh, this setup here doesn't show you um, the quality factor as well as I'd like it to. Uh, but the variable inductor, or the variable resistor that I put inside of that uh, on the breadboard, uh, it does have a reaction when you do uh, change the resistor, and I'll show you that um, just by making a minor adjustment. So the minor adjustment is going to cause a change in the the peaks. So. We get a better idea of the peaks by changing the uh, voltage per division on the oscilloscope. So let me show you that again. And so uh, Q factors or quality factors are a relationship between uh, the angular frequency, which, which we learn to be uh, 1 over the square root of the inductance times capacitance. And so it's a re uh, relationship between the angular frequency multiplied by the inductance of the circuit divided by the resistance. So the, the um, smaller your resistance is in a circuit, the better the quality factor. And a higher quality factor just means that you have a lower amount, at the resonant frequency, you have a lower amount of energy lost. See, you're storing energy in, in the oscillation uh, that's going on in the circuit, and so you actually lose less energy if you have a higher Q factor. Also, the Q factor is really important because when you're trying to tune a circuit, um, you actually have a range that you, you might want to be in in order to take advantage of that full resonant frequency. And on either side of this, uh, of this range, if you were to get really close to this, is actually what they call sidebands. And so if you have a signal that's, that has too high of a Q, uh, you might cut off some of your sidebands. And that, that comes into play when you're trying to uh, say you send a, um, an AM signal, uh, amplitude modulated signal, and you're trying to send information over the airwaves, if you cut off some of your information on the sidebands, you actually lose quality. So, you know, that's, that right there is a, it's a big factor. So you can be very selective with the high Q factor, but you may not actually get the results you want. So it's kind of when you're setting up an actual piece of electronic equipment, it's kind of a trial, it's kind of a theoretical trial and error. And uh, because your components, not all these components are exactly what they say they are. Some of them may have a variation of 10, 10%, 20%. 20%. And so uh, each piece of equipment has to be tuned to the, the, um, you know, the qualifications that your, your customer or your experiment is, is dictating. Well, um, I think that's about it for this uh, RLC circuit. Again, this is set up as an RLC series circuit, not as a parallel circuit. So if you're interested in that, um, I think there's probably some more uh, YouTube videos out there that will teach you about the parallel setups. Um, there are no um, 
There are no real uh, like low bad and high bad filters in this. This is more of a band pass filter. So it's just passing through and bringing resonance uh, the particular frequency we're looking for. Um, one last thing I can show you is that if I do change uh, some of these other values, uh, we can uh, get a little bit of change in the um, actual frequency itself where it peaks. Though taking off uh, 385 picofarads is probably not going to change a lot. But we can see that it does change it just a little bit. Just a little tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so just so I can show some variety in this circuit, what I did is that I lowered the inductor here down to its lowest value. And the way that that works is that there's a little round disc on the left side. And as you turn that coil, uh, the round disc moves its way down. And that disc shorts out the coil so that you're only utilizing the loops that are from the bottom all the way up to that point right there. So this is only really using one loop. Uh, actually even less than, looks like it's even maybe half a loop if you look all the way around. And so that lowered the inductance from uh, the 15.47 microhenries to 0.86 microhenries. And because of the way that the relationship works between the angular frequency and frequency, as you make the uh, inductance or the capacitance smaller, uh, you actually make the natural frequency larger. So 1 over LC, so it's an inverse relationship, you end up making a larger angular frequency, which ends up making a higher natural frequency. In this case, we went from 1.09 megahertz to 4.65 megahertz. And I would have showed you the inductor um, as it is moving along, but it is very, very squeaky and it would, um, takes about a minute to move all the way down the, uh, all the, way down the, the coil. So again, uh, yeah, like I said, we just changed the inductor. The capacitor is still 0 0.001385 microfarads. And that resulted in a natural frequency of 4.65. And the oscilloscope, if you were to change it here, it goes down, and as you get close to that frequency again, goes down below it, so the peak is at that 4.65. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. Um, there are lots of different ways you can set the circuit up, um, and there's also a lot of ways you can mess it up. So, you know, you can go through this process. If you want to do it yourself, you know, you got to get to learn the equipment, uh, the oscilloscope, how it works, how the function generator works, and uh, you know, find some, go out, find some old pieces of equipment that you can mess around with, and you know, have fun. Thanks.